Corey Swerves here for Slop News with Landon Quiones. How you doing, my man? I'm good, brother. How are you? Awesome, man. I appreciate you joining me. I know you had an incredible opportunity to join Tough the 31st season. Can you give me a bit of a background of who you are, your history, and what has kind of got you up to this point? Well, my name is Lanny Quinones. I'm 27 years old. Um, I'm from Sunrise, Florida. Um, I train at, I was training at Kill Cliff FC for a while with Mike, Michael Chandler and a lot of UFC fighters. Now I currently train at MMA Science Academy here in South Florida, now in my hometown in Sunrise. Um, uh, I, I'm a seven, one and one as a pro, uh, six out of my seven wins are all finishes. And I'm also the Titan FC lightweight champion. I also defended the belt as well. Um, I've been a pro since I was about 20 years old or since 20, I want to say 2017. And, um, uh, it's been a long road, uh, through injuries, hardships, uh, getting, having a hard time getting fights, you know, back in 2020, I was supposed to be on the contender series, uh, in November at season nine. And, uh, unfortunately, two days before the weigh-ins, I had tested positive for COVID, checking into the hotel for fight week. Uh, lost that opportunity. Um, didn't get a fight for a while. Had a hard time finding a matchup. Finally got a fight in February 2021. Unfortunately, two weeks before that fight, which was a title fight for Titan FC, I tore my ACL. Uh, had a two-year layoff overall from June 2020, which was my last fight before that. Ended up fighting for the Titan FC title in April of 2022. Won that belt, defended it in November. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be scouted by a Pilgrim Media Group in the UFC to be on the Ultimate Fighter Season 31. And I was blessed to be coached by Conor McGregor. And uh, here we are now. Awesome, my man. So is it correct that Chandler was your coach in your day-to-day -day life? No, he's not my coach. He was just oh. a training partner and a teammate at one point. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. Very cool. So being part of Connor, um, Team Connor, was that was that interesting, unique? Was there any... any I don't say animosity, but was there any feelings about looking across the way and seeing Chandler on the other side? Uh, to be honest, it didn't make any difference to me. I never really liked Chandler that much, so and I I know he don't <laughs> like me just before, even before this show. So it kind of made it interesting. I was totally cool with being on Chandler's team though, because my coaches and stuff were on that side as well. That or my coaches, the people that were my coaches, were on that side at the time. So I knew it'd be something familiar to what I have at home. But at the end of the day, Connor is one of the best southpaws to ever fight in MMA. He's also mm -hmm. the biggest superstar in the history of the sport. So being able to pick his brain and learn some techniques and learn some things that could work for me, it was good to get a different look and a different, um, different kind of experience. So I was very, I'm very grateful that I was able to be put in that situation. Yeah, my man. I mean, you seem to be dealt with a lot of hardships. Obviously, COVID. You know, a knee injury. Um, you know, where does that motivation and that drive come from? For you to be able to continue on here i mean you you've been professional for five plus years you know before getting your opportunity you know with the ufc i know you said you had an opportunity that didn't come through but like was there any time that you thought about quitting or do you just have this unwavering determination and drive that you knew one day you'd make it well you know doing this is a very rough sport it takes a lot out of you it takes a lot of the people you love your family your friends um your relationships, your pockets, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'd be lying if I were to say that quitting didn't cross my mind, you know, but I'm not a quitter. Uh, the common thing that anyone that has ever succeeded in anything, uh, the common denominator that everybody has, the, the Kobe Bryant said it before too, is love. You know, I love what I do. I love waking up every day to go train. I love pushing myself to limits. I love testing myself. I love helping other people. I love the camaraderie of martial arts. I love being a part of my team. I love helping the people around me. I like being a good influence and an inspiration to others. So um, uh, my motivations are, are that and also to change my family's life, to change my life, to, you know, leave, leave an impact on the world, whether it be through me being charitable and doing humanitarian work or whether it be just giving someone an example to look up to to show that no matter where you come from you can do something you can be something and um uh, you can overcome adversity yeah absolutely man let's talk a little bit about the uh, the ultimate fighter you know did it live up to everything that you hoped it would be uh absolutely not it was definitely completely different than what i thought it was going to be i thought i was ready for the for what was going to happen not as far as the competition but just the circumstances you know uh mm -hmm. the all the media all the the isolation you know having no outlets no phone no tv no music no books having to live in a house with got with 16 15 other fighters a lot of them that you may fight as well the mm -hmm. mind games you know the not having your coaches you know i also went into the tough house very injured i was fine by the time i got to my fight but i feel like the lack of 
training before going to Vegas and then the, the change in the training with different coaches and learning new systems and, you know, having different routines. Like it's a lot of factors that play into your performance and how you feel on the show, you know? And I feel like me being a prospect and not having the experience the veterans had, I feel that's what played a factor. You know, I don't feel like my fight resulted in a way of me not being skilled enough to be there. I feel like I still skill for skill could have won the show or be anybody in that house. It was just a matter of the experience and how I handled myself. You know, I walked in there a rookie and with that experience, I'm grateful for it because I walked out a lot more seasoned and uh, I feel almost like a young veteran coming out of that. All that experience rubbed off on me. So it was honestly a blessing in disguise. You know, it might not have gone my way, but it was something that was very important to happen to me, you know, and I feel like I'm going to take that experience and it's something that not everybody has and it's a huge mm -hmm. feather in my cap and it's a, it's a huge advantage to have to have that type of experience. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think kind of having the prospects first of veterans was a positive thing or do you think it's kind of, you know, a negative thing just seeing the way the outcomes have been going of the matches so far? Well, like I said, experience plays a huge factor, you know, and I, I learned it the hard way. You know, I went in there cocky, thinking it don't matter. My motivations were different. You understand, like, these guys have seen, been there, done that, and having that feeling of being in that UFC cage, I don't care what anyone says, it's a lot different than regular regional fights. You know, I fought in big yeah, stages. Yeah. I fought in other people's hometowns. I've had the the whole crowd cheering against me. I've been in very chaotic situations, but the eeriness and quietness of the apex and, like, just just – all the circumstances played in, plays into your head, man. And it is a huge factor. And guys that have been in that pressure cooker, like these guys that have fought in the UFC, fought in sold out arenas, fought in big stages like that, they've been there more times than you. So they're able to handle themselves a little bit better than you. So do I think it was a bad concept? No, I think it was a good concept and it showed the world and it showed the fans and it showed even the fighters like us in the house, how big of a factor experience is, you know? So I think it's, it was an important thing to see. Um, do I think the fights could have gone differently? And do I think the team McGregor could have definitely got more wins? Absolutely. I think everyone on our team was very good. They had a lot of experience themselves, but it's a lot different when you're in the UFC or you're on a platform like, like, um, uh, like the ultimate fighter, you know? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Man. The, the UFC apex, I mean, what a, you know, prestigious building in its own right. There's a lot of obviously history there through the years of tough and, and the amount of events that they, that they play in, but it does seem to be very polarizing. We see a lot of MMA fighters that prefer and love to fight in the apex. And then we see the complete opposite where fighters love to be in kind of, you know, T-Mobile arena, um, you know, with audiences and crowds and much more of that energy, um, you know, from your perspective, like walking into that apex and actually competing in the apex, um, I know you said that you've been on big international stages, obviously competing, you know, for, for title matches and stuff like that. So I'm sure there was a good size audience watching those types of events. Like, do you prefer one over the other? Oh, I for sure prefer a crowd, man. Energy is a real thing. And you, I get a lot of energy from the crowd. Like I said, the more chaotic a situation, the better I feel like I am. So I feel like that eeriness and that quiet feeling. And then like, also the feeling of living with my opponent. I was eating breakfast with my opponent on fight day. You know what I mean? I was having, mm -hmm. and if you saw my episode, I was in the hot tub with Jason Knight cutting weight the day before the weigh-ins. You know what I mean? Like we were hanging out playing, um, uh, playing spades and, uh, playing chess and like eating, eating with each other. Like it was like, it was really weird. It was hard to flip that switch and get in like my zone. You know, I mm -hmm. feel like it's important to be scared and nervous and twitchy for a fight. And I felt like I was trying to feel that way. And like, I just got myself so calm because I knew the moment was so big that I just wasn't a reactive and I was a step behind and I felt like that's where the experience played a factor and he got he got to work quicker than me and he was able to capitalize on that you know he showed I was a rookie at the moment and I felt mentally I was a rookie so um uh, it definitely is is a different kind of situation and being in that apex with no walkout music like that eerie feeling Dana's there Connor's there like Sean Shelby sitting cage side it's, it's a weird feeling man and I yeah. definitely feel like I would have done better and like fed off the crowd if there was a crowd for sure yeah I, I can respect that man um, you know, I, during the show, I know they limited the amount of television that you guys watched. You guys were able to watch the UFC fights on weekends. And I also heard that they allowed you to watch power slap. Did you, oh, were, yeah. you were you able to watch it? What's your initial reaction of it? And would you like to have an opportunity to, you know, to, to face your opponent that you did on tough in a power slap match? Well, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was crazy. You know, watching power slap, it's a crazy thing. I don't consider it. I don't know if I even want to consider it a sport because, like, does it really take athleticism? But it's a crazy thing. I don't want to say it. I don't know what it is, but 
it definitely takes some balls to be stepping in there and allowing someone to slap you like that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Would I want to slap Jason Knight? Hell yeah. Like, honestly, he deserves to talk all the shit he's been talking. Like, when you lose, you take your L like a man. He's still talking his shit. Whatever. He can do whatever he want to do. He deserves it. Whatever. He won. He beat me. Whatever. You know, I'm, I'm moving on from it. It is what it is. Hell yeah, I'd like to slap him. And I'm sure he'd like to slap me too. But would I do power slap personally? I don't think I would. I think the big, the big, one of the best things about martial arts is being slick, hitting and not getting hit. It's, there's an art to it. And, you know, there's no art to that in power slap, you know? Power slap's about showing how tough you are, how ballsy you are. And how how durable you are, you know. So I do respect that about it. But um, uh, yeah, it was it was a definitely an ex interesting experience. I'm happy they gave us a chance to watch it though, and like, I'm kind of happy they did because it's a new thing, you know. It's a it's a good new 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 concept. I think it's interesting. It's super entertaining, and it's definitely gonna get the people watching. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, if you take sport on one end, and you take entertainment on the other end, and I think you, I think somewhere in the middle, there's a sliding scale of where power slap sits, which is very yeah. unique and different than where MMA sits, where boxing sits, where pro wrestling sits. So, I mean, I think everyone could interpret differently that there's definitely a mix and a blend somewhere along that scale. Um, you know, and obviously every person's entitled to their opinion. And, and I think that there's very valid points for how people look at it. You know, as we kind of talked about pre-interview too, like it's no different than a boxing fan, not liking MMA or an MMA fan may potentially not liking, uh, you know, power slap. And so we're definitely seeing it evolve, you know, where power slap is, is very young. Um, you know, 20 years ago, the UFC was in the same, you know, the same realm and according to Dana and what, what he's been saying, um, you know, in terms of your background, all of the training that you've done, you know, the multiple disciplines, is there anything from your training that you could, do you think could equate to power slap to either give or receive a slap? I guess I would say sparring, you know, sparring, you're constantly getting hit. Your bo your bones are getting denser. Um, uh, you're taking contact. You're learning to take contact. I think just have being in great condition, I feel is very important. You know, a lot of these guys doing power slap are just guys that are heavy set. You know, they're not really athletic. I think doing strength and conditioning and being in good physical condition, good, having good cardio plays a big factor in how your chin holds up. So I feel like peaking and doing training camps in order to be in, in good condition is a huge factor, you know, maybe bag work, uh, bag work, like I said, conditioning and definitely sparring, you know, even if you're not doing slap sparring, because it's kind of ridiculous to put your hands down and let a dude hit you all the time when you're yeah. not competing. I think sparring and stuff, it allows you to be used to that, that feeling of getting hit and it, like it makes you more durable, makes you stronger, makes your body stronger. So I feel like that's, um, that's a good thing as well. Mm -hmm. You know, on the defensive side, I mean, do you do anything to strengthen your neck? Um, you know, and do you think that the neck strength has any impact on, you know, the, the resiliency of your chin? Yeah, for sure. It definitely does. I forgot to mention that actually, but I do that in my strength and conditioning as well. After every workout, we always do like leaning against the wall with a medicine ball with a 14 pound medicine ball, or we do like planks on the bench on, on our foreheads, on the back of our head, on the side, uh, very difficult exercises. We also use the iron neck, which is the one where you, uh, put it around your head it kind of looks like a helmet and mm -hmm. then you put it against the door like with the cable or the band and then you just move your head we do things like that yeah definitely very important something that a lot of fighters not only in power slap neglect but actual fighters boxers a lot of people neglect it so i think it's something that's very important mm -hmm. definitely. i want to ask you i want to ask you one, one more question about you know about getting hit and how 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 stiff do you want to be if you know you're going to get hit do you like because we, we're starting to see the people that clinch too much be much more susceptible to being knocked out. The same if people, if they don't clinch and get caught off guard are also more susceptible to being knocked out. Is there kind of a fine line in the middle or do you have any, you know, experience kind of with that? I mean, I think the, the biggest thing is obviously keeping your chin down. And the more your chin is up, the more you're likely to have your head whiplash and that'll turn you off. Um, so that's important. I tell all my students that is why I also coach for a living. So every time you get, I'd rather get hit with my chin down with my chin up. So my head doesn't whip, right. Or move around too much. Right. I want to keep my equilibrium, right. So keeping your chin down. And also, um, uh, I feel like, uh, I'm trying to think the question was, okay. Keeping your chin down. And then also timing when you tighten up, right. Timing when you, when you flex, I feel like if you're just completely flex like that, you're not, you're, you're not going to anticipate it. So I feel like if you can time it coming in tense at the right time, I feel like that would probably help as well. Awesome, man. No, I think that's definitely great knowledge in, in, in terms of, of giving a strike, um, you know, for MMA, I don't know if it's black or white or not, but are you trying to power through with your strikes through the opponent or are you trying to stop on the target or is there a mixed variation of both for different circumstances? 
I mean, it all depends on the intention. You know, I feel like if you load up every single strike, you try to go through on every strike, you're going to waste a lot of energy. And the chances of you, your attack being seen is going to be very, very clear. You know, you're going to be a lot more easy to time. So I feel like mm -hmm. I like to snap and turn my shots over. So I land and I, I'm, I guess you could say I'm going through them, but I'm not throwing th through them with power. I pick my shots. I like to pick like maybe one or two, like a tap. And then like, I'll find this, the right shots to throw power. So, I mean, not everything should be power. I think things should be placed properly. Um, it's kind of like what they do, you know, how they wind up, they do like a three count or a two count. It just kind of depends mm -hmm. on how they feel their time is they go, the, they can go on the first to the third, right? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, yep. Yep. I think like that's a good way to do it. Kind of gain the momentum off the motion and then you go, right? So it's kind of the same thing as strike. I like to hit a couple tabs, tap, 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 power, tap, 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 power. So I feel like picking your shot through like measuring is good. You know, I don't really like to go through on everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I definitely don't stop on the face either. If I'm going to hit somebody, I'm going to hit them. I'm going to make contact. Gotcha. Understood. I'm not sure if you're aware, but there is actually a uh, Isaiah Kiones in power slap. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I'm pretty sure oh, yeah. it's sim similar spelling. I believe. <laughs> I'm sure it's the same to be honest. I wonder if he's Puerto Rican or not. Uh, he is. Yeah. 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 Puerto yeah. Rican, California kid. Yeah. 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 Had a boy. Yeah. Has, has a big, big bald bowling ball head. <laughs> <laughs> and how's but, he doing? Is he winning? Um, currently medically suspended or uh, like, from the commission. So he, uh, uh yeah, so hopefully we'll see him back sometime. But uh, one last question for you, man. Where can people follow you on social media, your journey, um, you know, for what you have coming up in your career? Uh, you can follow my fan page on Facebook. You can follow my Instagram, which is at Lone Wolf, double underscore 145. I'm a tough 31 contestant, Team McGregor. Make sure you guys tune in until August 15th. That show is going to be airing all summer. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my team, MMA Science Academy. My coach is Roger Crawl, Troy Worthen, uh, all my teammates, my strength and conditioning coach, Ahmed, uh, my nutritionist, Shelly, um, uh, Melissa Prieto, my other strength and conditioning coach. I'm very happy to have you guys in my corner. Thank you so much for having me, brother. I appreciate you. Awesome. I appreciate you, man. Much love. All right, my man. Have a great day. God bless. <laughs>